Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2, you'll be playing Gabriel like you've never played him before. Here to give us a first look at the demo of the newly announced game is Dave Cox. Thanks so much for joining us, man. My pleasure. Always good to see you. Now, let's talk a little bit about Castlevania Lords of Shadows 2 and the demo. Where, this is taking place on a PS3. That's right. And tell us a little bit about the setting. So basically, this game uh, is set in the modern setting, but we, we take the player back right to the beginning when Dracula is at the height of his powers. Uh, and so in the demo, you play Dracula with everything. Uh, we give you all the tools and the toys that you're, you're going to find in the game um, towards the end of the game, but we, we give them to you at the beginning to let you see you know, how Dracula plays. Mm -hmm. And as we see here, his castle's under siege, um, his enemies have come to attack him, and um, it's up to you to, uh, to repel them, essentially. Mm -hmm. Now, the original Lords of Shadow was a big departure from traditional Castlevania, but a big success for you guys. A lot of people mm -hmm. like this genre and seeing Castlevania in this setting. Yeah. So, talk about how what this game expands on that experience, because it's throwing a lot at you, especially with a new modern setting. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we wanted to take Castlevania in a new direction, and we wanted to give it a uh, you know, more, much more modern feeling. Um, so, we decided to, to make it more of a hack and slash title. Um, people really liked the last game. You know, they really enjoyed the sort of strategic combat. So what we've tried to do in this game is we've, we've beefed up that aspect and tried to build upon that aspect that people really liked. As you can see here, you know, Dracula is doing a sync block. This is one of the sort of key features of the last game that uh, you know, well-seasoned players uh, uh, you know, who played well could do. Um, this is essential in combat, so as you can see here, it opens the enemies up for a powerful counter-attack. And it's something that you really need to master right at the beginning of the game, which is why we've made it uh, you know, an essential aspect of this demo. Excellent. So there's a little bit of a tutorial to start things off like, like as would be expected, but That's as right. the game progresses, yeah. there's a lot more depth to the actual interactions in combat, correct? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, this is not just a combat hack and slash game. You know, This is a game where there's a lot of exploration, there are a lot of secrets to find. Obviously, it's a very heavily story-driven game, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's a very important aspect of it. Uh, there's a lot of platforming. Um, again, it's something that we've tried to improve from the last game. And um, with this game as well, one of the sort of new, real new features we've got is the free camera system. In the previous game, the camera was fixed, um, so we only showed a certain part of the world, and a lot of people really wanted to explore that world. And exploration is such an important part of Castlevania that we felt that we really needed to beef that up with this, with this particular title. So with the free camera system, it gives players a lot more freedom to explore and to look around their environment and also helps them in combat too. Yes, we see some... Uh, <laughs> is that going to be something that we see a lot in the game? Absolutely, those one -on -one, yeah. Are those finishers of some sort? Or? Yeah, yeah. Um, Dracula, basically, his abilities are powered by blood. Uh -huh. So, um, you know, during combat, you can uh, grab enemies and bite them and take their blood, and that gives you a little health boost. And it also evens down the odds. You know, if you're surrounded by lots of enemies, taking them out one by one uh, mm. is, is, is the way to do it. But you can also use your area attacks to, use, to do crowd control. You know, you can grab enemies and then you can finish them off. Um, one of the other new things we've got here is the Void Sword. This is a, a new weapon that we've introduced, which wasn't in the last game. Um, as you can see here, he's just about to summon it. What this does is, when you hit enemies, this recoups your life, essentially. So as you're fighting, you can get life from your enemies. So it's a really good way of evening up the battles. You can see that. Yeah. I also noticed that the, you know, the UI is very minimalistic. Are you guys going for a hugely cinematic type of experience where that is, is something essential yeah. to make sure that the screen isn't kind of muddled with a lot of uh, information? Absolutely. I mean, the, the UI in the previous game um, actually disappeared as you're playing, and, and it will do the same in this game. We really want to get rid of the UI so that the epic grand scale of the world is really you know, portrayed properly. Right. Um, at the moment in the demo, it doesn't do it um, all the time, but in, in the final game, it will do. It'll, and, it'll move away. And quickly, Dave, the, the setting, the modern setting, why mm. was that important for Castlevania in this particular game? Well, at the end of the last game, we had the epilogue, uh, which showed Dracula a thousand years in the future, and people really liked that. You know, that really caught everyone's imagination. And we felt that you know, we wanted to carry on from there. So uh, at the end of that game, Zobek made an offer to Dracula uh, about ending his immortality. And this is the key story element of the game. And this is why we wanted to carry on. But we also wanted to show Dracula at the height of his powers. So we, we do a little bit of time travel, if you like. Not, not real time travel, but you see the castle, you see the old environments, yeah. but you know, it also mostly takes part in the future. Castlevania well. is always a classic, modern times or old. Tell us a little bit about now what we're seeing. We're talking about setting the stage with the combat and mm. a little bit of a tutorial, but this is continuing on. And this is the demo that's on the floor at E3, correct? That's right, yeah. This is the first time we've shown the code playable to, to the general public. And what we wanted to do is give the players a chance to taste Dracula's real power, to you know, see the levels and the environments, and to, to meet the character for the first time. Because you know, the last time we saw Dracula, he was this kind of withered old man, uh, you know, a thousand years in the future. So we're going back in time now and showing him 
you know, at the real height of his powers, you know, with all of his abilities, and giving you a little story element of, uh, you know, his battle against the Brotherhood of Light, which is the order that he once belonged to. Now we're showing some platforming, which was, uh, which is a key element of the Castlevania games. Um, we wanted to beef this asp aspect up because in the last game it was quite slow, mm -hmm. quite methodical. Uh, this time we're taking it, making it a little bit faster, a little bit more interesting. You can highlight um, your path by pressing the L2 button, so you can see where you need to go. Um, this area is quite a simple area, but later on in the game um, they're quite complicated, so you need to see, you know, all the different places that you can explore. Now, the ability to see the environment and where you need to go is that something that is just uh, story-driven mechanic or is that something to turn on and off or is that something that you wanted to make sure that every player has access to? We wanted to give players you know a reason to explore um, you know having an open world setting which this game has which the other game didn't uh, you know players need to have lots of places that they can go to and in platforming there are many areas there are many different branching paths that players can look for and having the, um, the highlighter really helps. Right. Uh, this is interesting because when you get out here, you're going to see the Brotherhood uh, besieging the castle and um, you're going to meet one of the Titans, one of the sort of key elements of the game, uh, the gigantic Titans. And um, we wanted to really improve the Titan gameplay. And this time you can fight on Titans, you can move around on Titans, and that's something that you know you couldn't just couldn't do in the last game. And you mentioned a few things. Uh, did you get a lot of feedback from the community after the first game about what they wanted to mention about the camera and yeah, some other things about the uh, adventure and traversal systems in the game? Yeah. Are, are those derived from direct feedback or something that you recognized that you wanted to kind of do initially but didn't have the time or resources? It was a bit of both, to be honest. I mean, we, we, we knew when we shipped the game that there were some things that were you know that could have been improved. Um, we listened to the fan feedback and. When we got the opportunity to do the second game, we took all that feedback, uh, you know, from our own teams and from the fans, and we really worked on the aspects that people wanted to see improved, you know, such as the combat. You know, that was really uh, an important element, and people wanted it to be to, to maintain that strategic element. People wanted to be able to explore the world. They wanted to be able to, you know, go wherever they wanted to, and you know, having an open world environment in a Castlevania game is something that's never been done before. Right. But we think it's really important that players have that choice that they want to explore. Of course. You know, some players, they don't want to do that. You know, right. Some players, they just want to play from A to Z, find out the story, and, and you can do that. You know, it is a very heavily story-driven game, but a lot of players, you know, they'll want to go, hey, I just want to go down that alleyway and see what's down there, and then they'll find new areas, new monsters, new secrets to find, and I think that's, um, you know, that's something that Castlevania players expect. He's found a little trouble right here, Dave. Who is he squaring off against? This guy is a golden paladin. He's one of the, uh, the Brotherhood of Light's elite warriors, and obviously you need to use all of your powers and abilities to take this guy down, he's a real challenge. So you've got your Blood Whip, which is your main weapon, which is great for, for using um, you know, at range. Um, and your Void Sword, you know, for recouping health, uh, but you need to get close for that. And then you've got a new weapon called the Chaos Claws, which you probably didn't see, which is for breaking down enemy defenses. So we're giving players a lot more tools you know, for them to enjoy the combat.